some of remarks before on how one of the things that always really bothered me about Rome 2 and Beyond is that the units all feel really samey and lifeless and soulless and like they have no personality or uniqueness to them. They don't have an actual feeling to them. There's no gravitas there. There isn't anything to make me feel attached to them or engaged. Like there's no connection between me and the units. And part of that is that they've been reduced to just being packets of stats as opposed to having a position in the game that is defined. There's nothing there that used to be there. And I'm going to be showing that with Rome 1 versus Rome 2. But before I do that, <laughs> here's some threads from my subreddit that are pretty good. So this one's from 11 months ago and it touches on this a bit. So, spears, spear warriors, heavy spears, armor spears, noble spears. I think this is one of the examples that we'll actually use. <laughs> Britney Spears. And then, another one. This is something that I made four months ago, so near the end of last year. Side by side of all our Verne infantry in Rome 2 and all Gallic infantry in Rome 1. And then I clicked one of every kind of infantry and put them there. Did I do one for Rome as well? I don't know, I think I might have done it in a video on my second channel with uh, Rome 2 just as an aside, but in this video I'm going to actually show it explicitly and I'm going to do multiple comparisons, if possible, time per min. So I got one of every unit and I put them in blocks and they're indistinguishable, use them all the way out, they're the same. And then in Rome 1, when you do the exact same thing, get one of every kind of unit and put them side by side, you can immediately see that they have all of these different properties. First of all, there's the shape of the formation. This is a mob. Uh, what does the game call it again in the files? Uh, it may be mob, but it has its own type of formation. And the druids shares that. So you have standard rank and file. You have disorderly mob. And you've got the formation that skirmishers hold, I think. Maybe. It's been a while since I looked at it, but there's different properties that define the units. You could edit a unit of Hastati into being a mob by just changing some code, and it would completely change how they fight. But, as you can see here, it's not something that gets utilised. And then you've got the number of men in the units, like you've got 160, 64, 241, and that's scaled up, so it's multiples. So, in normal and then it again so normal gives you half of huge so it's 120 32 80 so these are big differences but in Rome 2 it's just a flat every time it's the same so that's going to be what we're going to go into and examine and show but I did put it on my, my subreddit four months ago because this was really bothering me. Oh, look at this, it's interesting. I'm gonna play Devil's Advocate here. So he's just playing Devil's Advocate. Rome 2 does have different formation densities and shapes. Some of the mods I've played showcase this. I'm not sure if it has the giant mob formation though. Show me, post screens of a favourable side by side that's more representative of the game than this. Don't care about mods. Because that's what it actually comes down to. What is the experience of players like when they're playing this fucking game? Mods are attempts by people to fix the game after it comes out when the game designers have failed to do what they're supposed to. So we shouldn't really care about mods. It's not up to modders to fix these fucking games. And there's been a bit of a shit show a few weeks ago or a month ago about that modders versus CA, which I'd like to see that controversy be revisited in light of how much Warhammer 3 has been clearly established as a fucking flop because it's just been abandoned. Yeah, I'd like to see that return to. <laughs> just made some ludicrous observations that immediately reminded me of my earlier reading of your comment here. We'll be uploading soon make another post. Your first paragraph seems completely vindicated and this was me talking about some of what I examined about mobs and uh, how men are positioned when they're standing. It's, it's a really systemic game, Rome 1. And you can really see that when you look closely. But when you look closely at Rome 2, it's just disappointing. And that's what I, I was examining there when I went into this. I was showing how 
the collision is totally fucked when men are running through each other, when units are running through each other. And someone actually made a fucking post here. I haven't actually looked at this yet, but he made a video here called Infantry Combat and Pulling Through in Four Total War Games, and someone's appreciative of it. So I'm going to look at that later. But yeah, it shows. I already know what this is going to show. I haven't watched it yet, but I already know what it's going to show. So it's good to see other people joining in with scrutinising these games like this. Yeah, and four months ago, I likewise addressed this to an extent. But yeah, let's look through for more. Notice this, we're trying to find different formation densities and order lists. It's time. Yep. That's what I was doing back then, so I'm revisiting that and continuing where we left. So let's get into this. No, wait, wait, one, one more thing. Rome 2 introduced the lovely tradition of making Total War have sterile visuals with visually indistinguishable units and icons. Yep, so this is another aspect of this that you can be paying attention to while I do this comparison. How these are all the fucking same, it's hard to tell these apart. Whereas here it's all vibrant and iconic. It really is iconic. This shit cannot be iconic, it's precluded by its clumsy design choice, its stylistic decision, artistic direction they've taken, that that's just never going to be iconic or easily recognisable. Fucking pottery, fuck's sake. And then a uh, bird's eye view where it's just blobs down there. And this is what Prince of Macedon meant definitely when he was talking about blobs. Look at the fucking state of this, it's just shit, what the fuck? And then when you look at this, this is what I think of when I think of Rome. And this is what the battles actually look like. Even if these units get engaged in messy ways, you still see the structure of the formations. So it's, it never turns into shit like this. And I showed this with a video as well, where I showed how they were making ridiculous blobs. That, that preceded my videos. Rome 2 is a terrible game and a miserably pathetic RTT. I'm going to put all that in the description, I think. <laughs> Alright, so let's get into this. This is what we're here for. Alright, this part is going to be a challenge. I'm going to try and stick to examining only the aesthetics. So, first of all, we're going to do Rome. We'll do faction after faction, switching between the games each time to compare. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Starting with Rome 2 and Rome and its melee infantry. Sword armed melee infantry. Fourteen units matching that description. So you can draw some conclusions on that alone. Fourteen units. So we have one unit that stands out, Gladiators. So we're going to move that one over there. And then we've got 13 units here that are all indistinguishable in terms of how they're placed. And the unit cards are almost all the same as well. Even the Gladiators have a unit card that looks just similar to the rest. It's a bit thinner looking. The black shield of this extraordinary is the only one that really stands out to me. Well, you see, just at a glance, this is useless. And then when you look at the units, some are lighter, some are darker, but you cannot use this in any way. And the banners themselves, some of them are. Romans, ready for duty. These ones are different for whatever reason. Medium, medium, heavy, heavy. Yeah, it's useless, you can't tell these units apart. Aesthetically, they're the same. It's only when you zoom down that you might notice that some have Lorica, some have Chainmail. See Chainmail? It's like a hauberk. What do you call that? Roman Chainmail? There's a Latin for it. But yeah, that's the the differences here in Gladiators. So it's like you have two units that you can distinguish, Ready two groups 
this group and this one, and they're all indistinguishable. And there's a trend of units that are darker when zoomed out being heavier, but it doesn't seem very reliable because there you go, Evocati's here, and they look quite bright. So yeah, aesthetically this is crap. The hell are you meant to do with this? And of course, the fact that they are all clones in terms of how they're placed. Look at that, 13 units that all get placed the exact same way. Exact same density, spacing, formation ability. Do we have loose? No we don't, of course not. Yeah, it's just terrible. Shocking. So what ultimately comes down to is different stats. Shocking. Alright, let's look at room 1. And I'm gonna have to avoid my test units for this test. Peasants, Hastati, Principes, Legionaries, Samnites, Legionaries, Praetorians, Urbans, Arcani, Early Legionaries, Legionary First Cohort, and that's everything. So now we look at Rome Total War. So Rome 2 is just all clones, clone units. Unit cards are all the same, the seer has been units are all the same, it's just clones. But this one... We've got some mobs, mob shaped units right away, we have a small gorilla unit right away. Then we've got six units that are almost identical but we do have officers leading these ones. You have a uh, standard. Uh, the spacing might be different, let's check. Is the spacing going to be different at all? Not meaningfully, anyway. And then we've got these two units with the legionary eagles. So there are meaningful differences. See the ones that have the guys on the side there that wear wolves? What is that? Is that a wolf? Wolf's head? Wolf's fur? And then the centurion. So there are differences. And Arcani, of course, is its own kind of unit. Gorilla unit, stealth units like ninjas, Roman ninjas. Completely made up, of course, but nonetheless. And these guys have the eagles which inspire. And if you zoom out, you can definitely always identify these massive units. Look at how deep their formation can be as well. Some of them can turtle, some of them can't. But these are all visually the same, like this. But the unit cards, at least to me, because they change the way they're phasing, and the plumes and stuff vary. Like, see Hastati? You can always recognise them by the facing to the right with the plume that goes back. Is that feathers? What is that again? Hmm, the face is back and they have their swords up. And that makes them distinguishable at a glance from even units that are really similar to them, like Principes. Which I've pointed out before how similar they are. It's one of the failings that Rome 1 has. Not really differentiating these two units when they should be more differentiated, arguably. Even early legionaries and normal legionaries, the angle changes by 45 degrees. See how the angle changes constantly? And then Urbans, they have this open-bodied pose where it shows the is that a muscle curious? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and, yeah, every unit, every... See if you were to try and find the two most similar unit cards here, that would be difficult. Uh, early Legionary First Cohort and Early Legionary Cohort. They are... the same. But that's because they're meant to be the same kind of thing. 9, 13, 3, 17, 
Legion Reapers cohort. Nine, thirteen, three, seventeen. So they're the same for a reason. But this one has the eagle beside it to point out, and also, of course, you can tell this one is the giant one. So there are some similarities, of course. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. But you don't ever have a situation where you're just confused, like, how do you tell these two units apart? What the fuck is this? Why is the game like this? Is there any other game where there are just redundant units all over the place? Like, see when you play a Command & Conquer game, do you ever have that feeling of Why does this unit exist? What is this doing here? It's only in, uh, in new Total War games that I get that. Alright, back to Rome 2, and we'll look at goals. Alright, this is gonna be Sw- no, Arverne. Yep, and then we're gonna get one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So all the standard melee infantry. And we'll have to get cavalry there. All right. And this will give us a look at the Averni that I pointed out on my Reddit post. Because, yeah, this is really shocking. So, yep. Unit card style was atrocious. You cannot tell them apart. What the fuck is this? And then when I place them all... It's the exact same shit as the fucking Roman infantry. They all are just the same to place. Star battle. This one stands out because it has no armor. Naked warriors. So it's because it's bare skin that you can even recognize them. Shut the fuck up. Uh, unit cards. Look at that, even the, the feet, it's just so copy-pasted. There's the flat-footed ones here. Feet are flat on the ground for these. But then for these... Oh wait, this one as well. But for these, they're all tiptoeing with their front foot. Is there a reason for that? Is there a pattern? Is there a reason for that? Spear, melee, melee, spear. Melee, spear. Spear, melee, Warriors ready. light, light, medium, light, heavy, 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 heavy. So when they have their, when they're tiptoeing, when they're light on their feet and prancing around, they're super heavy. But when they are both feet planted on the ground firmly, they are light or medium. <laughs> See how this is just such nonsense? And the shields that they have as well. I don't. This is what we've waited for, lad. That looks like a square shield with rounded corners, but they don't actually have that. Where do you think we'll be tomorrow? And then if I look at this one, just round shields. And if I look at this one, round shields. So it's always the shields don't even correspond to the unit cards. It just shows it's, there's no consistency or sense about this whatsoever. It's just bullshit. It's all nonsense. And of course, if you pull this unit out, oh man, I hear that. Weird way of commanding units around. So if you have these here, these are all indistinguishable as fuck when you zoom out, and the unit cars themselves. You have to actually read. That's how bad it is. You have to fucking read to be able to tell these apart. At one point or another, reading is required. So you have to be able to have have the name of the unit appear. The only one that I recognise is this one, Old Sworn. And I think it's because they kind of just look like old men or something. It's like they have a beard and wispy hair or something. I don't know, I've just always sort of thought that with Old Sworn. It's the only one that I've got any familiarity with. The rest of them, I just don't have any familiarity at all. I can't tell tell any of the units apart. And then when I zoom all the way out, it's just all black, black units. There's nothing. There's make. There's no sense to be made of this whatsoever. Warriors! Visually, they're indistinct. Unit cards are the same as well. You have to read the names of the units. So it's the worst UI of any Total War game. Period. How can it get? How can it be any worse? How can it be worse if you have to actually mouse over and have the name appear to be able to tell which unit is which? Which I absolutely do at the moment. Then 
It's fucked and there's no way I'm going to be able to learn what these symbols mean. Like a square or a, a rounded bit in the bottom or a triangle. There's no way I can train myself to be able to use this system. You need unit cards that are recognisable. There's no other way to do it. And it's just atrocious. Alright, that's the... That's the Arverne. So yeah, the point was made there really well, I think. Now let's go to room one. And do it again. Uh, yeah, get off that map. That was a fucked up map. Do it again. And I've got duplicate units here that I'll have to watch out for. Alright, this is the real one. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Second faction, second game. So, unit cards are all different. That is uh, Barbarian Peasants, Spear Warband, Druids, Fanatics, uh, uh, Swordsmen, Chosen Swordsmen. I just know it immediately, it's so easy, I don't have to mouse over. See if I just have to guess the name of the units by looking at the, the unit cards in Rome 2. I don't know how many thousands of hours it would take f f of just playing fucking single player campaigns as that faction for me to be able to do that, do what I just did. Peasants, Spear Band, Spear War Band, Druids, Fanatics, Swordsmen, Chosen Swordsmen, it's so easy. And part of that is that there's just not redundancies. Peasants, Peasants are obvious, Druids are obvious. War Band is the biggest War. unit. I remember that. Fanatics. It's like with Rome. Rome 2. You can zoom out, I think, and spot them. A bit. Kinda. So, you can tell all the units at a glance, except for these three, and then you have the unit cards helping you out. And these units are similar anyway because they are robust melee infantry. These two are especially similar. Swordsman and Chosen Swordsman. This one's just like an upgrade to that one. And this one is like a really offensive low armor variant of the standard infantry unit. So you would just use the unit cards. Definitely. Druids to demoralize peasants. Or just a blob that's similar to swordsmen. They're just terrible at it. Warbands are light spears. All right, nowhere near as bad as round two. Nowhere near, and the unit cards are good as well, so that helps a lot. All right, we're gonna go over to Germans. Well, let's just do Germans. No, no, I'm gonna keep it to the order, the system we have. Alright, so Swaby at the bottom. Noble Riders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there are a lot of units for all the good it does. A lot of units. Alright, let's see what I can actually figure out here. This one is Berserkers. No idea what this one is, no idea what this one is, no idea what this one is. This one looks like Naked Fanatics or something. No idea here, just a standard warband. No idea, no idea. These look the same to me, like there's no way I would ever learn to distinguish these. Uh, no idea, but this looks like... Armoured? 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 Like 60 armour versus... Yes, I got that right, they are armoured, you can sort of see that from the card. And this one is the German equivalent of Osworn, in the Heavy Infantry. Swordmasters, yeah. So I learned to recognise this one as well. And this one... I don't know. Wodenized Spears, yeah, alright. Let's place them all now. So we have... Oh man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven units. 
before us. That all take up the exact same space and have the exact same space and look at how organized and Roman the Germans were. Holy shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they're all just the same. These guys look like naked fanatics with how how bright they are. Round shield swordsmen. Yes, I could tell that they had low armor. Do they have low armor? 40 armor? How can they have 40 armor? They've got no armor. That is retarded. Jesus fucking hell. These guys have 50 armor. They've got barely more armor than these naked guys. Yeah, that is fucked. These guys have 10 armor. Let's see if we can find someone with less armor than round shield swordsmen, but who obviously have way more armor. 40 armor here. How the fuck do these guys have armor? 60 armor here. 80 armor here. Man. These look like they're way more armored in the unit card than them. 50 armor here. These guys have tunics. And they're padded and everything and they barely have more armor than naked guys. This is such a dumb game. Jesus. Club Levy! 40 armor on these as well when they're naked. Battle ready and eager! And this is a unit that was added in, I don't remember them all. Hex bearers. They don't even look like women in the unit cards. Blood sword. 20 armor, they've got look look, what's that there? That guy has is that the only one that has that? Yeah, what a what a mess, what a rushed mess. Club Levy! 40 armor on these naked guys. Sword. 20 armor on these guys that are clothed. Yeah, there's no way. You can't even visually confirm things. Jesus, that is awful, that is really bad. They so fucking bad. Complete us. dissonance. Night hunters! Yeah, Let I looked at these guys and thought ready. low armor, no armor, but they have 40 armor, which is more than Night Hunters! More than some units that have actual armor. We hunger for blood and battle. Sons of I remember the berserkers that they were in the game from the start, but these Any were not. Warriors! And they're loud. Yeah, they don't really function like berserkers either. They don't have their own AI and stuff. They're, they are just like guys with high health and high attack. And they're terrible, I think. They cause fear. Scare everyone. Yeah, that's the only thing they can do. Berserk. Oh man, they can go berserk. <laughs> they must have added that in. Have they added that in? Trying to make the game more like Rome 1 after all at some point. Like they, must, they must have patched that in and tried to make the game actually resemble Rome 1, which was actually good. But yeah, these unit cards are so fucking bad. And visually they're the same. Fuck this. Alright, we're gonna go for... What's another one we can do? We need another faction. Let's try this. Let's go with... Well, I could do the Greeks and show armor top plates and the Spartan hot plates. And the, the armor top plates will be golden and the Spartan hot plates will be red. Let's just do it quickly and see how it looks. We're gonna do all pikes on the Greeks. There we go. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I was testing something there. One, two, three, four. Alright, and then we'll do uh, Sparta as well, because we have Spartan hot plates. Look at how red they are, you always know the Spartans because they're absolutely red. No, no matter where, what angle or how far away, unless the camera shading fucks up like that, but you, I, I still just know that they're Spartans. Armour top plates. From the front, you recognise the Spartan, I mean the armour top lights immediately. See these shields, they're iconic. It's the Greek sun, isn't it? Meant to be. 
militia hot plates and regular hot plates are very similar. But actual hot plates have armor. Yeah. Alright, that's enough. And the unit cards speak for themselves. The uh, militia hot plates look like amateurs, like they've just had a spear thrust into their hand that second. Hot plates are the only ones that face to the right like that. Armor top plates, it shows their golden shield and their their go golden plume. And the red is unmistakable, of course. Now let's look at Rome 2 and the Spartans. Sparta? Nah, I don't have Sparta, never mind. I don't have the Greek, si the Greek city states because that's a DLC that I don't have. <laughs> oh man, fuck that, fuck that shit. It's funny because I actually pre-ordered Rome 2 like 10 years ago. I just deleted it off Steam and then ended up, ended up using a key that I had by some other means to get to have Rome 2 again for these kinds of tests. But guess what? I don't have the DLC and I don't want it. Fuck DLC. We're gonna show... But I think you know what would have happened anyway. Is there a faction that has the... the pikes? Just like the Greek cities have? Let's have a look. Pike infantry, levy, pike, thorax, silver shield, nah. Alright, we're gonna do this. We're gonna just show Parthia. We're gonna show Parthia in cavalry. Parthia and melee cavalry. Which includes shot cavalry. Let's do that. Alright. And then I'll show it in Rome 1. Because uh, you've got a lot of cat fracks here. You've got horses. Got a wide selection of melee cavalry to look at. Oh man, I'm glad I did this. This one stands out. I would have assumed these were the cataphracts because they look white like they have cataphract armor. But look at this. They're just regular camo spearmen. So I failed that test. And then we're gonna put down these. Oh, noble horse archers can get the fuck out of the way as well. Yeah. They are... Wait a minute. 80? 80? Eastern cataphracts are different. More spacing. Eastern cataphracts and royal cataphracts are different. Let's have a look. Let's place them. No, they're not. These units are all the same. Same spacing. Yeah, like you can see obviously there. And I can't tell them apart. I could have told that these were cataphracts. I can at least do that. Remember, forget about the horse archers. Camels, cataphracts, spear cavalry, spear cavalry, spear cavalry, cataphracts. Royal cataphracts. Yep. So you can actually tell cataphracts from the unit, these unit cards because the horses have a mesh on them. And they all have spears. Oh no, wait, ready. lancers. This looks like a sword. But it's a lance. Are your ready? Charge bonus 51. Charge bonus 34. Charge bonus 67. Alright, let's try Rome 1 now. Custom battle. And we're gonna look at Parthia. All melee cavalry, remember. One, two, three, four. Fuck. Oh wait. Now they're mercenaries, doesn't count. Man, Parthia is strong, look at this. So there's a selection of cavalry units this in Rome 2. Cataphract camels. Unit. Take up a completely different... They have absolutely different spacing. Camels. Very spread out. Really big unit. 
really big. Jesus. I didn't want this to be like this, did I? Surely not. That is really... Takes up a lot of area. And then... Ah, uh, general units. So it's just cataphracts that Parthia has in terms of cavalry. In terms of melee cavalry, they only have cataphracts. Jesus. So they only really do have two units. Cataphract camels and cataphracts. Holy shit. Yeah, run to a war done, fuck around. Straight to the point. Let's confirm this. Yeah, they do rely on their horse archers then. They just have a melee cavalry unit, a melee camel unit, elephants, horse archers, and then long range horse archers. These ones are fast moving, these ones are not, but these ones have longer range and they're good in a melee. So this one moves fast, whereas this one is actually solid. Yep, alright, well that's it. Hopefully that was interesting. Point made, I think. Almost no redundancy, quite parsimonious. Easily recognisable units at a distance, and with the unit cards especially. You almost never have to actually read the names of the units in uh, Rome Total War, whereas in Rome 2, you almost always do, and it sucks. And, yeah, point made. Aesthetics of Rome 1 are just way better. Way better. Way more functional. Way more engaging. Eye-catching. Units have way more personality. The units are memorable. I can remember all these units and the role they have and intuit the role they have and how they fit into the game, whereas in Rome 2 it's just a mess everywhere. And that's just another way the game shit. Point made.